Hello again everybody. Um, I've put a question in the title of this video which is what I'm going to answer in the video but before I do um, the reason I'm bringing this question up is that uh, I offered my Laceus flavus uh, a nest. I actually have offered them this nest since they came out of hibernation I just haven't posted about it on the channel. So I had the setup with a Wakushi 4-way, the Outworld, their test tube and a Wakushi humid module all connected up um, as soon as they came out of hibernation and their test tube water when they came out of hibernation was really quite manky it had gone a, a sort of a yellow colour so I wanted to offer them something and see what happened. Anyway it didn't take them too long it was about two to three weeks and they moved out of the test tube uh, and into the nest so I was really pleased. Um, however, uh, as soon as they did that, I swapped their manky water test tube with a new freshwater test tube um, because I actually saw them in the nest and thought it looks it looks a bit big for you. Uh, you know, you're really happy in there. But, you know, here's a freshwater test tube. If you if you don't like it in there, you can move back. Um, and then this is quite funny because I wanted to make this video um, and I couldn't get good footage in there and I still can't as you can see on some of the footage I'm going to show on the video it's it's I can't see in very well um, but anyway I left it I left it to dry out um, so I could film in there and they moved back out of the nest into the new test tube so I watered the nest and within 24 hours they'd gone back out of the test tube back into the nest so they clearly prefer it in there to the test tube and, and they know that water test tubes there and they're not using it um but since they've moved into the nest i've noticed that the um the two queens have separated themselves away from each other um and are, are living in different areas of the nest mostly and there's very often there are two brood piles um, around each queen which brings me on to the question which I've posed in the title of this video, are Laceus flavus polygene? So first of all some terms, let's let's outline some terms. Um, this is basic ants but um, you will see these scientific terms used a lot by ant keepers and on ant keeping forums and reddits so it is something that you do need to know. So um, first of all let's talk from the basics monogene so two words make this up the first is the word mono which means one and the second is this word gene and this basically in social insect terms means the organism that will pass on the colony's genes to the next generation i.e the breeding female and that's an important thing to talk about at this stage. Um, the breeding female in ant terms is a female or a queen in this case um, that is able to produce elates because it's elates that allow an ant colony to produce a new colony. Producing sterile workers is not producing the next generation. It's not the gene, if you see what I mean, isn't being passed on. Well it is, but sterile workers aren't going to go anywhere. That's the end of the line. So it's only once you're producing elates that you can be considered to be a reproductive queen um, in terms of ant colonies. So then the second term polygene it's basically just the opposite poly means many um, so it's many reproducing um, females or many queens um, but like I said the important part is at the point that you are producing elates um, because there's a another term that we now need to bring into the conversation which is pleometrosis so pleometrosis is this um, way that some ants um, and Laceus do this um, will start colonies with multiple queens but then over time they will reduce the queens down until by the time they are ready to do colonies producing new colonies i.e. producing elates that that point there is only one queen left. Now Laceus niger are the famous example of this which many people have done YouTube videos on Laceus niger where they've started Laceus niger colonies with multiple queens and as soon as you get workers pretty much as soon as the first workers are born um, the culling starts 
and uh, it's not always queens that fight queens in fact i think that's quite rare it's it's normally the workers that make the decision and they will uh, sometimes kill queens sometimes they just bully them um, they, you'll see stories of queens with legs bitten off, antennae bitten off. They can end up just leaving queens with no legs and no antennae just to starve. You know, it's it's quite brutal. Um, but yeah, they will remove queens, either queens on queen or workers on queens, until there is only one queen left. And like I said, Lacey and Nigel do this fairly quickly as soon as there's workers. But Lacey and Flavus, they're different. They're different for a couple of reasons, and that's why it makes this question so complicated. The first thing that's different about them is that you will see Flavus colonies with more than one queen that is relatively old. Um, and we can, we'll talk about that in a second. And the second thing that's different about them is Lacius Flavus are extremely docile and unaggressive species of ant. They and slow as well as in slow growing so they just seem to take longer to do everything and they're not as aggressive in doing it so what does this mean for the answer to our question are Lacius flavus polygene um, like i said there's a lot of people that will confidently tell you they know the answer to this question but i'm not convinced that there are for the following reasons <laughs> Um, first of all, how many people have actually kept ant colonies, especially Lacius flavus, which is not that much, I, I see very few flavus videos, um, how many people have kept an ant colony to the stage that it's producing elates and therefore can answer this question with 100% certainty. Just saying, oh, I've got a flavus colony that's three years old, doesn't answer the, with multiple queens, doesn't answer the question. Um, so what are the possible answers? So the first possible answer is straightforward yes. Um, there are people who will say you can have multi-queen multi flavus colonies for as long as a colony survives. Um, as I said just now, question them on have you actually got to the point of producing elates before you're able to answer this question or where do you get your information from? Um, I'm not a big fan of yes, straight yes. I don't think the answer is that. <clears throat> the second answer is no. Um, and this answer would say, very often people will acknowledge, yes, look, you can have queens two, three, maybe even four years into a colony. But by the time you reach sort of year five or year six, when they're ready to produce elates, they will be down to just a single queen, even in a Flavus colony. Um, there is one sort of asterisk that goes alongside this, which is unless they are sisters. Um, and that's not as sort of unheard of as you might think, because a, a colony's elates are all taking off in the same place. They're all experiencing the same wind conditions and the same um, f obstacles, you know, things to fly around. A, a, lot, a number of queens are going to fly in generally the same direction, mate at probably roughly the same times and fall to the ground at roughly the same times. Yes, they'll be mixed in with elates from loads of other colonies, but if you collected queens on the same day in the same place from the same nuptial flight there is some chance i mean i've no idea what that chance is probably very small um but i don't know whether it's one percent five percent half a percent uh, ten percent I, I don't know but there is some chance that you might catch multiple um flavus queens where some of them happened to be sisters that originated from the same nest and therefore they're able to break this no they won't be polygene rule because they are able to be polygene if they're sisters and then the third option brings in um another word that we should talk about which is oligeogene um, and this that word oligeo means few or little and this is where people say there's a couple of hypotheses here for what's happening the first of these hypotheses is that the queens would be aggressive towards each other. They don't want to live together. They don't want to be part of the same colony. But as long as they don't come into contact with each other, they're happy to sort of, well, you know, 
out of sight, out of mind. What I don't know about doesn't bother me. Uh, and what people say is that they will separate themselves into different areas of your setup. So you need, I mean, but surely by the time the colony is getting this big, you're going to have a, a decent sized nest. So if maybe you looked at the setup that my Laceus Niger are in, maybe one of the queens would be in one of my 5.5s and the other queen would have moved to the other 5.5. So they're in the two different nests. But yeah, people say that the queens will separate themselves away from each other, but the workers will still act as one big colony and will feed both queens and go out and forage for both sort of queens and everything um, but the queens don't meet. Um, now there's another hypothesis here which is that the, let's start again on this. Um, when I looked up actually let's tell a little story sorry um, when I looked up the evidence on um, Laceus Flavus being polygene and who would notice multiple, you know, the scientific evidence. Um, and Wiki, um, for example, um, their citation links to a scientific paper from 1957 that says, oh yeah, we've excavated um, Laceus Flavus colonies in the wild and we found multiple queens in the colony and therefore we're concluding that colonies can have multiple queens, but they were separate from each other, so maybe it was oligogene. Um, but I, when we had the pandemic, you could access um, scientific papers. JSTOR was letting you access as many papers as you wanted per month for free. Um, so that I used that time to read a lot of scientific papers on ants. And I read one that cast doubt on some of these earlier studies. What they claimed was is that they had done some excavation and they said that what actually happens is that when Laceus flavus colonies get very close to each other in the wild and colony A happens to tunnel through into colony B, rather than that starting an intercolony war, because flavus are such a docile species of ant, what they actually do is they brick it back up and they disconnect their two colonies and colony A makes its tunnel go in a different direction. Uh, and what they said was that by very careful excavation of wild ant colonies, they discovered that colonies sort of intertwine their tunnels around each other, like some sort of ball of spaghetti or something. Um, but they never actually touch, they never cross colonies. And the earlier researchers that had done the excavations and said, oh yeah, we found multiple queens in the same colony, were actually mistaken because they'd excavated too quickly and too vigorously and had failed to notice that it's in fact separate colonies just not touching. So yeah, I've read people or uh, scientific papers that have cast doubt on some of these earlier scientific papers and whether or not it's true that that, that there are multiple queens in the same colony. Um, so again, and I don't know if it's possible in captivity that you could effectively have two colonies. I don't know if that is viable, if they could separate far enough out in a setup that you've got two colonies completely separate from each other where the workers are separate, the queens are separate, the brood is all separate but maybe they're sharing an outworld and they're perhaps running past each other down a tunnel but colony A stays on the right of the tunnel and colony B stays on the left of the tunnel. I don't know if that's possible and if that's maybe what people see. And like I said the answer to this question is uh, we don't know. There is scientific papers casting doubt on earlier scientific papers there is almost zero evidence on, let's say, YouTube of actual ant keepers having Laceus flavus colonies that have reached a big enough stage to produce a late. Um, I've seen videos from people with colonies sort of like two, three years old. Um, but yeah, any insights? Anyone want to provide any insights or what they think or what they've heard? Um, please do so in the comments section. Um, like I said to you earlier, my money personal money is on no unless they're sisters but it takes them a long time to get down to the breeding queens possibly two three even four years before they've culled the other queens so that's why I think you can see multiple queens in a colony for quite a long period of time but that's what my personal money's on let me know what you think thank you everybody until next time goodbye